Hi, how is everyone doing tonight? Good. Thank you for coming. I know everyone is really busy and I really appreciate that someone took some time to listen to poems tonight because I think it's really important. So thank you. And thank you. I'm honored to be part of Holocon West reading series in the Utah Humanities um, Council Book Festival. It's a privilege for me to be here tonight with Star and Shannon. I feel so blessed. They are amazingly talented writers in their own right, and I have been able to work with them both in uh, workshops and hear them both read. And I'm going to give a little plug. I'm sure you noticed that Shannon just won the Utah Arts, Arts Council first place original writing competition for poetry. She's such a rock star. So yeah. I And Kat is amazingly talented, and I can't wait to be with you tonight as well. So I'm going to read a few pieces from my book, and then I will end on um, hopefully what is a comic relief note, um, depending on the composition of the audience. This is funny or not funny. You're all pretty young. Um, so this first one is uh, dedicated to Ronald Brown, who was a World War II vet who stepped on a landmine in 1944. And he went home and he thought he had a bullet in his knee. And when his family lived a happy life, and when his family went to pick up the ashes, they said, hey, did you find that bullet? And um, they handed him, they handed the family, a bag of metal. So um, the only word that you might need to know is hugots, and it means landmine in French. Out of ash, six ounces of shrapnel. Ronald Brown. One, no one told me about the goss. I didn't think to ask. Two, that morning walking across a meadow near Moselle, mist clung to the trees like smoke. Frost gave way, melting under Queen's leather. Another step, I'm swimming in fire. Iron eels lunge, teeth burrow through red spittle in my mouth, eyes then blue, then white, black eels burrow into my knee like it was coral, bedding into the dark caves of sinew and marrow. Fire eels eat muscle, their backs breach the surface of my skin, roiling under, again grinding, nerve against nerve, until the pain is an electric wave, undulating, heavy, and fanged. Three, one leg weighs more. I can't bear bouncing children on me bum knee. On cold days, the eels drag their teeth over cartilage until the current shrieks like airport alarms. And after they burn my flesh and bones, they find that swarm still warm. So um, a, a type of poetry that is an experimental form that I happen to love is called erasure. And if you're familiar with it, it's literally, sorry, and I did this workshop together, um, it's literally erasing um, an existing text and then creating your own work with what you have left. So you can't add words, you can only use what's there. And um, a poet named Jen Bourbon did this with Shakespeare's sonnets and even erased the title, so it's not sonnets, the title of the book is Nets. And she will grade, a lot of people use it as a visual, so they'll have the original text in like a light gray underneath it. Um, so you can see how it informed the, the original and the new inform each other. Um, Eden's Edge is loosely based on the creation story of the Holy Bible, so I did an erasure of that. Nothing is sacred. Be fruitful, subdue. Seventh day herbs rain upon face of man. A river became four heads, gold and onyx. Dress it and keep it, help meet. Sleep made a bone naked. A serpent sowed fig leaves. Art bring forth sorrow. Flaming sword keep the way. The not forgetting. Poison Bloom, a friend, gave himself the gift of elephant bones, exhumed a cow from the zoo. His hair shocked white, the hard work of joy. 
He adorns her burial mound with stuffed animals. Children gather, lift to his step. Look up from your books, he waves, as Alice, let's say her name was Alice, dances her bone dance. Now he dreams with her bones in his front yard. He dreams of Savannah. He dreams of trumpeting. He dreams of Theobab. When I turned six, my mother gave me the gift of an elephant ride. I floated between a continent, her ears. In the photograph, I'm waving how far she could take me. I have not earned my joy yet. Swaying, I lumber toward my thorny bush. Hooded crocodile eyes lit with the unholy glow of false remorse. Measure memory's heft in ivory. See where the cross hatchings, that which has been given, that which has been taken, intersect in dark angles. Ripe tomato, short season. One date, talks, handcrafted drinks, clear eyes, and bruised mint. Old kiss desires seed. Snow patches melting, your voice almost warm. Until I planted, I waited for things to grow. Alone in heat, vines climbed over bushes, over fences, over vines, a reckless tangle of herbs and berries. Honeybees danced delirious, winged lavender and chai. I lay in long summer grass, gorging on sun sugar cherries. Timing contrails burn out. Sunflowers bow with gratitude, kind harvest, temptation, beef steak, and better bell. Basil and oregano, the last cilantro. Crookneck squash and twine, solitary watermelon saved from frost. So these next two poems assume the voice of tomatoes. And um, there are a couple of, well, there are probably more. There's two that I know of. Um, an indeterminate tomato bears fruit all season long. And a determinate tomato, um, it's like a canning tomato. It just, you know, it's got the one shot. Um, I think of them as sisters. I think indeterminate tomato plays um, a long game and determinate tomato is a little bit of a hussy. <laughs> so this is indeterminate tomato. Left to myself, unpruned vines wander laden along the soil. Mid-season, I languish with the weight of waiting, sprawl propped with bungee cords. At Belladonna's signal, I put out that pungent, tang, slug, slick, coffee grounds growing old with fun and rind. Take your time pinching my green pearls. I'm spinning sun to gold. Stars swell to fruition, one at a time, like a pony's golden apples. Green tunics lined with gold dust flutter about my knees. I tease out harvest, courting bees at the bee balm. You think I have no more to offer? It's a long race to summer's end. For you, I break the cage. Overtake the kale. One chance, be splendor. Split me until seeds line the lip. Adrift. A faint skunk over fireweed and moxwood. Dawn's afterglow links a blinding code on silver lake. This early stillness is motion. That code changing direction again. Under the V of a duck's wake, rainbow trout grasps speed. Surging up, it risks thin flight, breaks the surface hot on the trail of dragonfly. Blue, black, transparent, misses, begins the inevitable descent. Moments in limbo, I reach for what I can. Omen in cloud. Sunlight speckled on Potgut's back, 
some clear sign that sun and air and fish and lake can read, but not me. Water arcs off the scales into refracted light, missing once again, falling again into the dank comfort of familiar sorrows where the code eliminated to high sheen says now, jump now. Then it is just the lake. So this is my, uh, it was so gorgeous. I live in Salt Lake, so it came up through the canyon today. So gorgeous. This is like the perfect fall day. So this is my ode to autumn. A stone lingers. I stand alone in a grove of aspens, embers alight, jeweling the mountains, topaz and carnelian. Skirting the last dance, leaves flare, brief, but glorious before winter hushes the garnet taffeta. Oh, look at that. I can't count. Um, winter squash. Goshawks circles. Eyebrows start as January and just as mad. Hunger for hollow views. Cloud gliding, she is searching for a flash of yellow, tasting storms, fire. I am not wintering well. Snow crust sings like limp line with each step. I fill the weathered feeder with black seeds to entice warblers. Break holes of daily tasks, no meat. Last butternut plated, untouched. No lover levitating from the dishes. Rising above pines in a single searing arc, her scarlet eye on fat sparrows, my famished heart. And this one is the last one from this book, Kenny's. Daughters, no grapes. When you are crushed, when your skin splits, you become fine vintage. Only after you have been undone will you swirl. Daughters, riot of hot pink peonies, do not squander your time in the sun. Lift on your new legs before your petals lose their freeborn flush. Daughters, blaze in a sea of fire ovals. Bite violets white lip and tongue honey. Be audacious as Robin X, the wild Irish sea. And I'm going to finish tonight on this one. It's new. Could be working still. If you don't count, my cat, 22 and senile, wakes me up every morning by doing laps, jumps over my head like a small panther stealing dreams crop dusting me with farts reeking of leaking bile, lands with a humph, jumps off one side of the bed, humphs, crawls around the foot of the bed until one of her remaining claws snags on the carpet, frees herself, heaves up. She weighs ounces. How can she be so loud? Over my head, 4.30. The house is her litter box. Gray feces squish between my toes when I walk. If you don't count vomit and the tumor, hard as a line between her breasts, she shows no age. Glossy black fur, eyes yellow as a reason. She still surprises me. Wrecked bones, shattered moth wings, squirrels tail. I tried to fill her. One morning, waking to rotten stench of that tumor, shit in the bathtub, I put her in the car, drove her to the dog park, carried her to the tunnel, under a grove of wee trees, and threw her into the heart of the shadows. I went home to rest. It rained then, of course, and the first real cold fall. So I took a can of food and sat under the cottonwoods watching a pierced kid in black leather throw frisbees for her retriever. When it missed, the dingy fangs clicked. The next night, I put salmon in gravy right next to the first can, fried now and untouched on the side of the cement, and called her name into the black tunnel. 
third night, I brought the Bumblebee Solid White Wild Liqueur. Recited, kids, I'm really, really sorry. I know how much you loved her. It was after midnight before I heard her trilling from across the other side of the street, like some dark diva that had just landed from a quick trip to Thailand and couldn't wait to tell me about the appalling sleeping conditions. Hungry, but otherwise completely intact. If anything, more alive. Thank you very much.